guys. All right, so we've been talking about Kirk Cousins. Next, uh, you know, realistically, we got to get another quarterback eventually. We've been talking about that. It could be two to three years. And right now, in, in the last call I talked about, maybe trading up to get more draft picks. What do you guys think about Dalvin Cook? I mean, he is at his athletic prime right now. Mm-hmm. We re-sign him three years from now. He may not be there. He his draft his trade value may be the highest it is. And do you think we can move? You get a higher first round pick for Dalvin Cook, and would the Vikings even do that? Do you guys think that's a good idea? That's my question. Hey, hey that's Dave, all I have. I'll, hey, I'll Dave, hang up. Dave, Dave, oh, yeah. don't don't hang up yet. Wait for this because I love what you just said. Reckless speculation. <laughs> Dave, okay. thank you very much. All right, you Talk guys. Have a later. wonderful day. You too. Bye-bye. So in essentially doing that, you would be trading Dalvin Cook to somebody else so they could have the right to sabotage their own draft or their own uh, salary cap by paying him. Yes. I'm a down. Do it. Do it. I, I'm I down. It. I'm in for that. I Do love it. it. He's going to hold out, right? Well, not if you trade him somewhere else. Somewhere no, else is right. going to pay him. No, but, I, but I'm saying if you're being responsible and you're the Vikings, Dalvin Cook's going to come to you and say, I want a new contract. You're going to say, oh, Dalvin, I'm sorry. We can't do that. Then Dalvin, under your rights, is going to say, all right, that's fine, but I'm not going to show up for training camp. Yeah. Um, Dave's call hits on a point that I would jump on. I would put Cook in a package in a heartbeat to move up. Heartbeat. This is Pittsburgh and Le'Veon Bell, How um, in a sense. How high do you think you can move up with Dalvin Cook? Dalvin Cook in year one, what pick can that get you? I want to get into the – if if Tua's going to drop to the bottom of the top ten, I want to get I, there. I don't know about that. Do you think Tua's top five? Yeah. Ooh, okay. Man, I, people, I think if he's there at five, up the Dolphins quarter, will take him. Guys trade up for quarterbacks all the time. I It would not surprise me if the Dolphins trade up to pick him at three. Okay. Mm-hmm. Trade up with Detroit because Detroit's not going to select a quarterback there. They're – fine with Stafford right now I would go if I could if if I could get to a let's say at um six or seven because I think getting into top five might be impossible but anyway if I could get to a, at six or seven Dalvin first round pick this year and another first round pick I think the place that you would have to trade with is Detroit at number three mm. I think that that is the, mo- the mm. most logical place to trade into the top five is number three at Detroit oh, that's tough man I, I love where you're going though would if, I would I trade Dalvin in a heartbeat? But if you if you would you trade him in the division? Have to face him twice? Yeah, I gotta talk about that. If you if you're able to move up though to three, it yep. would take a lot. Yep. But if you're able to do it and you get Tua and Tua ends up being a franchise guy, who cares? No, I who I, cares what you gave up for him? I agree with that one too. Because I mean, the Giants probably aren't trading back. Trading back. Maybe. Well, they got their quarterback. They right? got their QB. They so got their maybe at four. Maybe at four. They got the York. quarterback, Danny. Miami's not trading a back out of there. All right. They might trade up. Let's go to uh, Richard in Miami. Hi, Richard. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Doing well. Got, How's South I got, Beach? I got, two, I got two things for you. All right. Do you think our play calling is what the team is, a Viking, old and primitive? Do you think – so, I'm sorry. So, the play calling that Kubiak and Stefanski used was – I think it was very much what the head coach desired and yes. wanted. And – and but the – okay, so here's – I'll throw this question back at you. Do you think more modern pass-oriented play calling would work with this quarterback and this offensive line, Richard? Well, not with the current of offensive line, but the quarterback, yeah, we know he can make throws. But if we fix the whole line, then yes. I, I mean, look what they, Derek Henry did. Look what Deshaun and um, uh, uh, DeAndre Hopkins did. You know, those types of the plays, I, I would like to see the Vikings do more. It doesn't have to be often, but when we need to win the game, these are things that I would like to see. They play so old of a football style, it's like they're so predictable sometimes. And, you know, we get nowhere and we never win like that. Not even a, I haven't even seen them attempt a freaking fake field goal in God knows how long. And my second thing is, yeah. um, when they go to dry, like, why do they always try to take people out of their natural positions when they draft them? Like, 
One, we've been dying to see Anthony Barr doing what he did in college. And two, I think Trey Waynes was a free safety or something like that in college. No, he's and corner. they put him in a cor- cornerback position. And it's like, dude, he's not, he's meant to go get the ball, not be a defender at the same time. Yes, you could keep up with a lot of faster uh, cornerbacks, but he cannot defend the ball that great. And I'm tired of seeing him do it because it's just like, it, it doesn't work out for the Vikings. It's always been a bust. There's only been a couple of guys who they switch positions, and it's Richard. And you're it's very worked. frustrated. Yeah, it's two. Yeah, it's definitely. Tuesday. They lost on Saturday, but I can still hear the frustration definitely in your voice. Yeah, I mean that's what some of the things I've been seeing that it's been a recurrent thing. You're switching this person from this position to this position. If you didn't like them when you got them out of the draft for the position where they playing, yeah. why would you try to switch them up? It doesn't work out for you guys. If they ain't good enough when they're on the pra- uh in, in preseason, yep. hey, cut them and move on to the next. That's it. Thank you, sir. Take care. Okay. Uh, all right. Talk yep. to you soon. Uh, some Ryan tweets in at score North at Jay Zolgat at real D Cunningham. Why Tua? We have no evidence that he will be anywhere close to hundred percent of what he was. And that's the only way he's worth that trade. Go over some other prospects. That's my point though, about the medicals. Yeah. If you, and you, he's got the year to rehab to continue to, to well, get and himself I'm right. I'm also under the assumption play. that the Vikings are going to do their homework and figure out just how healthy he so, can get. So am I, I guess. Where yes. I, I can't I'm do that you. homework, but I'm under the assumption that the Vikings certainly can and will. And I believe uh, Trey Wayne, if I'm not mistaken, was cornerback at Michigan State, right, Manny? He was a corner, yeah. Now, Barr, I, I don't agree. remember him ever playing safety. At Barr, State. I agree with Richard on. I have been always <laughs> baffled. Barr, Barr was a running back when he was like a freshman. But, you know, <laughs> why, but why Barr is not putting a hand down sometimes, I don't understand. But Wayne's... We've Wayne's been talking about that for five years with him. Was a corner in college and remained a corner here, and I believe and, he's uh, going to be with a different team. And Simon tweets a picture of Trevor Lawrence photoshopped in a Vikings uniform. I'm a huge fan. I I'm love that, that kid. I love that kid. John in Jacksonville, thanks for Let holding on. Up. Hi, John. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, what's up, John? All right, so uh, long time listener, first time caller. I'll Thank you. Stuff. Um. I got a uh, I got a wild suggestion for the Minnesota Vikings. Let's we hear need it. cap space and we need draft picks this year, right? Yep. Let's trade Harrison Smith, free up about ten million dollars in cap. We're still going to let go of Xavier Rhodes, obviously. Yes. We draft um, Antoine Winfield Jr. He's projected to be a late second day guy right now. Okay. So we replace Harrison Smith that way. We use the draft picks that we get from that trade, move up in the draft, and we take Tua. John, I love where your head is at right now. I love it because Harrison Smith is aging. Harrison Smith is still damn good. But Harrison Smith, if you trade him or shop him, now salary cap-wise, I'm not sure exactly what comes back to get you and what doesn't. But I think mm-hmm. I think how you're thinking is exactly how the Vikings should think, which is forget loyalty. What makes the most sense for us? I love that. Right. Thank you, John. Call back, All okay? Right, thank you. Uh, absolutely. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I love the outside the box thinking. The outside the box thinking is great, but I don't think trading Harrison Smith is enough to get you up into the top five. No, but would you put him in a package potentially? What else is in that package? I would. Well, but what else is oh, in draft picks have to go in that package. Draft picks are going to be in that package. You better get Antoine Winfield, though. If Who that's I, the think plan. He, I think he's going to be a player. Yeah, I, I do too. I but think you better get him. Like if that's if you're going to move Harrison Smith, you better get Antoine Winfield. I think he projects in my, in my mind in the pros. Antoine Winfield Jr. Prote- uh, projects to do what his dad did. Yeah. At the end of his career, inside corner, some safety. And a multi-positional player. He's he's but, just a football player, man. He's going to be so he, good. He's his father. I yeah. th- I think he and is I think he's a better athlete. I think he's Jabril Peppers. I love him. Yeah. I love that kid. He's got instincts for the ball. Mm-hmm. He's a solid player. I would not put him at safety full time. I would not personally, but I think inside in that starting nickel hybrid, it's it's a cornerback slash linebacker role. He's got, that his he's dad got this up here, too. Oh, he's got he's his got old man's brain. All he's, sorts of football. His old man, man was a genius football player. He yep. is. He, I've been, he's been the guy in the Gophers I've been the most impressed with. Yeah, probably as far as just instincts go. Bateman, in terms of just p- Bateman's my player. most impressive guy 
because he gets almost everything. Jordan Bateman. Okay, but that's I, fair. But yeah, he's great. All right, back to the phone lines. Viking Vent Line Coffee Club. And I do believe we're going to go to a guy. Rashad Bateman. I have. Oh, I'm sorry. Rashad Bateman. Oh, it is? I, I'm cracking up. Yes. Oh, I'm bad. cracking up. I'm cracking up. My bad. Uh, back to the phone lines. A guy that um, I have not heard from in a long, long time. But we go way back, I believe. Don in Ohio. <laughs> is this you? It is. What's going on? Don, hey, Don what's up? Great Where to you hear been? from you again. Yeah. Thanks, guys. So here's my thought process. I've talked about this on Twitter. This you know, Zimmer and Spielman go into next year, or without last year, their contracts, which if you think about this, we all pretty much agree. It's I don't want to say it's a full-blown rebuild, but it's going to be a rebuild process, and the Vikings will take a step back. So, the, you know, at this point, the Wolves really should think about being proactive. Here, here's my thought. Yep. You either give Zimmer and Spielman an extension of three years so they can run through this, just like the Seahawks, how the Seahawks did their minor rebuild, they retooled things. You know, give them a year, maybe a, two years to get this rebuilding them back where they need to be, or you need to scrap this, fire them, and start new. You can't just go into next year with them basically on a lame duck deal. You can't because if they, hypothetical, say they go, what, seven and nine, which is pretty much, I think, a realistic uh, realistic area right where they're going to be, maybe eight and eight, nine and seven mm-hmm. with all the turnover. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you really going to say, hey, you know what? You guys did this. You know, you guys deserve a contract extension. No, I mean, they're just, just not going to be that way. So why wait till the shoe drops? Either give them three years yep. right now, say, yep. you know what, let's get you what you need. We believe you guys, which sounds like they do. They already came out and said, hey, you know, we, you know, and Zimmer said, hey, you know, and great. Zimmer's done a good job for us. Great. I mean, he's done, he's gotten the team in the playoffs every other year. But what are you going to do? I mean, you can't go into this 2020 season saying you guys are, you know, you have to prove to us. Well, either they have already or they haven't. It's been six years. So that's why I was like, you know, that's why I was upset that stefanski has gone. I would rather if, you, if you're going to go in a different direction, then you should have gotten rid of Zimmer and promoted Stefanski to head coach. I, that was just my thought process because I think Stefanski would have been an exceptional head coach. Because now you got all these coaches. Love dropping, it, Don. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, do you trust these guys, Don? Trading, Don, what's that? Do, do you trust Rick and Mike? I do. To get this thing right, I do. I, I think, uh, it, I think, I, I think you're going to have to. I mean, personally, I thought we should have fired them at first, but then I'm like, you know what? Give them. I, I, I think I give them the benefit of the doubt. I think you're going to have to give them three years. And I think that should be enough. I, I think three additional years. I give them this year, next year. Let's put that. Or I mean, 2020 and 2021. I'd give him that. Hey, right? Don. Hey, Don. Think, yeah. Who, who is your quarterback in 2021? Well, they ain't cousins, that's for sure. Uh, I, <laughs> if if everything was equal. Give me right? a name, Don. <laughs> I love the if answer. everything was equal. Yep. Right? And yep. if we could get cousins to trade cuts, get his take out of a no play, complete or no trade cause, and he says, okay, trade me. If I know the new team got that. And if I could get a quarterback right then and now for 2020, I would give all the money to Teddy Bridgewater. Hey. Hold on. There you go, Don. The Viking horn, just for you. Yep. yep. I, I would have to. So and I bring think him back. Okay. about getting rid of Cook, too, by the way. Madison is ready to be running back one. I Agreed. think he's shown he could do that. Yep. I think if you get him a, a complimentary back behind him, I think Cook's great trade bait. I would still move up. <clears throat> I would still try to get Cook anyway, even if we don't move up to get a quarterback. I think Cook. This would be ideal time to get rid of Cook. I just do. You can get the maximum draft picks out of him for this right now. We, we certainly can't afford him. I think our top priority should be resigning Harris, no matter what. Harris should be the top priority. Resigning the two should be uh, Mac Alexander. I, I don't think there's any any question about that at all. Thank you, Don. Yep. Call back soon, okay? I will. I promise. Thanks. Bye. Hadn't heard from Don. And- Ages. Don had been MIA. I love that we have had five different would callers be, today from five different states. Would you be willing? Four, four different states. Would you guys be willing to sacrifice Harrison Smith to bring back Anthony Harris? Hmm. Anthony Harris is going to get paid what by is, somebody. It could be you, price? but I don't think that you can pay. What, what are we paying? He years? was PFF. I think him out to be one of the, if not the best safety in the league this season. He's going to get an enormous contract somewhere. You cannot afford to pay two safeties like this. You cannot. That's a waste of. That's a really bad use of your resources. That's a question to think about, though. 
It is. Because mm-hmm. if you – It's a tough question. Because if you keep – you love Harrison Smith and he's a great player, Andy Harris is walking. Yeah. 651-646-8255. Let's go to uh, Will in St. Paul. Hi, Will. Hey. Um, I'm just really frustrated about the offensive line, and I've been that way for the last five years. It seems like every year, instead of you know drafting somebody or spending some real money for agency – Rick Spielman, you know, tries to get somebody in the late rounds or kind of find some, you know, third tier offensive lineman free agency. But I think we just saw on Saturday how that approach just doesn't work. I mean, Pat Elfline, he, he's just getting manhandled out there. I mean, he's, I mean, his soft crap is just killing us. Uh, I mean, I, I play offensive line at a uh, division three school. I have a teammate, Matt Leathers. He could do better than Pat Elfline. He's a D3. Should player. the Vikings sign him? He's a senior this year. Uh, he played in a senior bowl a Ooh. couple weeks ago. His name's Matt Leathers. He's a senior from Texas, All right. Brown College. Vikings should hit him up. He's what, a lot uh, cheaper than Elfline, and he can actually block somebody. What round is he projected to go in the draft? I can give uh, late third day. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. All right, well, thank you. Appreciate the phone call. I think Pat Elfline, if nothing else, has to be has to compete for a job. Mm-hmm. Your, your cap he does not cost you that that much so there's not incentive to really to cut him but you've got to have him compete for a job here's, you can't just gift him that job back here's the thing with the offensive line though because i'm torn on it and collar brought this up yesterday they they have not completely neglected that area of the team they just haven't done a great job of putting together a really strong unit Right, but that's I where, mean, but that's where your that's, construction should start. That, right. The problem is that even Brad Childress got here and said, if we're going to get this right back in 2006, the defensive and offensive lines have to be really, really good. And you know and what? They never said that. And you know what? They drafted Pat Elfline in the third round, to, and he was starting center for them in 2017 as a rookie. Right. And he did a good job, and then he got hurt, right. and he has not been the same guy since. Absolutely, uh, Josh. How are you, Josh? I'm fine. How are you? Doing well. What's up, Josh? Uh, well, you know, it's. I just want to talk about the zone, the zone blocking scheme. Uh, it works fine, you know, but when we come up against these teams like Green Bay, San Francisco, Chicago, we just can't, we can't move the ball a damn inch. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, I thought it, you know, an easy solution. And I think, I think having uh, through to me on the sideline the whole year, coaching male practice, you know, why not from time to time switch up the Switch up your your offensive philosophy from a zone scheme to maybe just a power run scheme once in a while, and rotate some rotate some of those guards in. Obviously, the guards are a weak position, but maybe you know, focus on your weakness, know what it is, and then rotate some fresh guys in there on a week to week basis, and, and get a get a thumb for running back. You know, that's the only way we're going to be able to beat any of those uh, bully defensive lines. We need some. We just need some more meat back there. And uh, we need to push that ball. I mean, the running game. Is hey, still Josh, very Josh, I, I think yeah. Dalvin could be considered on the on the cusp of being a thumper. I think that this is just a question of to your point. What, what you're saying is when the Vikings played good teams, they had problems. Yeah. You know, because we get we get very fooled by, oh, they've won four consecutive games. The Vikings are red hot. Oh, yeah. Who did they beat? The Giants, a Philadelphia team that had no cornerbacks, an Oakland team that absolutely stunk. So they ran Falcons through a team that was yeah. awful. So they they ran through literally bad defenses and bad teams. But when they played yeah. halfway decent teams, they got their comeuppance. That's well, the, those you know, decent teams had great defensive lines. They couldn't run the ball an inch. And I'm I'm, yeah. I'm telling you, with fresher guys on the offensive line, I and a, and a, you know maybe just a little bit bigger of a running back. Yep. I think the running game, they, they got to stick, you know, you still have to, Mike Zimmer is right, you have to run the ball, and they just didn't have the offensive personnel, and maybe just ro- rotate some guys in there. I mean, I don't, I think it was an easy fix. They, they had Drew Samia sitting on the sideline the whole year, and it was a lost opportunity, in my opinion. Thank so. you, Josh. Yep, bye-bye. All right, let's take one more call before we go to our uh, first break of the show. Eric, thanks for holding on. How are you? You're good. How are y'all doing? Good. What's up, B? Uh, first time caller. Um, Appreciate real that. Quick, I just want to say pretty much Kirk Cousins. We need to move on from him. Uh, the ba- the main thing is the system. We can't keep this same system in for five years. If we give him a five year extension or another three year extension, are we assuming that Kubiak is going to stay for that long? And we don't want 
to have to bring everybody in and say, okay, you got to play this system because this system is good for Kurt. And I think if we get rid of him, we draft a quarterback, we can be more flexible on what system we play. Um, I think first off, Kubiak is a genius, but I mean, how old is he? And, you know, I don't think he's going to be around for too much longer, maybe a couple more years if we're lucky. Uh, The next offense coordinator we bring in, who knows who that's going to be. I think they'll promote Clint Kubiak. Uh, But to uh, Judd's point in the draft, I would love to get up and get Tua, but I don't think that's realistic. I think in Rick's mind, he's thinking this team's good enough to win next year. This team is good enough to compete for a championship next year, which I think a lot of us disagree as fans. And I think what they should do is trade up for quarterback, or I think there's a couple names that could be available there at 25 that that could be interesting. I think Jordan Love, uh, the quarterback from Utah, I think he's an interesting name. He's athletic. He's got good size, good arm. Uh, he needs a year to develop probably, but that's that's perfect because he's got a year behind Kirk. Um, so I think they need to really look at drafting a quarterback in the first or second round. Um, I don't necessarily think that there will be somebody worth the first round pick, so they should take a corner. I know Stephon Diggs' brother, Trevon Diggs, yep. is kind of in that late first round. Right now, they're talking about him late first round, early second round. I know Antoine Winfield's like probably a second or third round pick. Those are two interesting picks to me. But uh, yeah, I think I think they got to do something about the quarterback position this year before it's too late. Uh, the other point to uh, Judd's question earlier about signing Anthony Harris or Harrison Smith, I think if it comes down to one or the other, I think you got to keep Harrison Smith. Uh, he's already under contract. He's been, you know, pretty much the rock for the defense. So I wouldn't say he's the leader. He's kind of a quiet leader. But uh, I, I think if it comes down to one or the other.